Hello everyone. June the 20th today. A day before summer solstice. Yeah, I mean, what can you say? These are exceptional times. So amazing to be alive right now. In the middle of this chaos, in the middle of this transition of shifts and changes on all levels. It's not easy, it's quite demanding, but it is definitely not boring, <laughs> if anything. So yeah, um, it was again amazing how the sun showed up at the very powerful moment, as you will see in astrology, as earlier today, it was actually 1709 universal time, which is pretty much midday in Eastern um, North America. And here in the West, it was around 11 in the morning. When this big flare went off here from Sunspot 3339, an X flare, and it uh, the radiation which came in, that strong X-ray pulse f f from the flare, that ionizing radiation, made the whole upper atmosphere into plasma hmm, causing a deep shortwave radio blackout over North America. Here you see the map. This is the impact of the electromagnetic pulse directly entering into Earth's energetic field you see right over North America this already gives you a hint that this is where action is really getting seriously intensified I would say it's all over the globe everyone each of us experiences this transition this enormous potential of expansion and of personal development which we are all pushed through yes we are forged by existence just i can't forget the moment when saturn entered the sign of pisces which which was back a few months i guess in early march or so at the same moment there was damocles entering Pisces which is a, a very special little body which takes a 40-year orbit and exactly pretty much to the day on the same day Damocles uh, the story is the sword hanging overhead in on a thin thread over the throne this in itself I'm um, showing yes anyone who's daring to step into power or be in power is in power right now will feel that imminent danger of every moment it could be the last moment that's the intensity there is and if we dare to get into our power that's exactly the same paradox we are facing in a way so there's a a challenge there there's um something also which is tickling the adventurous spirit of everyone and we are definitely enjoying the ride for the most part at least i can speak certainly only for myself but that's what i get as a general feel so that was the x-ray spike here again don't forget the, this is a logarithmic scale so let me just scroll down here so you see the dates that was on june 20th 1709 when that spike was at its highest so a logarithmic scale meaning if this is level one then this is level 10 then this is level 100 this is level 1000 this is level 10,000. so it's it's exponential um, so this is extremely powerful 
output of the sun coming out of one spot as you see here here in the eastern limb cell of the sun 3339 again remember the sun is rotating slowly as seen from our perspective on earth it takes about 13 to 14 days for what is now here on the eastern limb just rising over the edge uh, to set on the western limb of the sun again about 13 to 14 days and that's not an equal movement it moves faster at the equator than at the poles which creates torsion fields which is one of the explanations why we have all these extreme magnetic turbulences which are basically what sunspots are in their extreme form extreme magnetic field settings which then can collapse and, and generate in one single strike an enormous output of power so anyway you see the sun is speckled uh, with sunspots 181 that's a high reading we are in the year of the solar maximum just want to reiterate that those of you who missed that that prediction of when the maximum would be here has been updated a few months ago you can go back into my archive i did a recording on that showing that the maximum will likely be reached by the end of 2023 early 2024 january 2024 is a perfect candidate when pluto for the second time will enter the sign of aquarius so this is really where we are working towards it is that last final visit in um, capricorn which is definitely um very special started just a few days ago actually on the um 17th or so of no on the 11th of june it was when saturn dipped back into capricorn but let's start looking at astrology maybe one more thing before we go there want to show you the crop circle the latest one here i'm always um visiting the crop circle connector which is the oldest site which reports every um, new formation you see the three is the governing number here very obvious this was on the 18th just a couple days ago the latest one likely to be the latest one before summer solstice and i'm also thinking of the nine who uh, were particularly mentioning the number 333 333 which is a mere half an hour after the summer solstice interesting just for the numbers sake i will do another video on the summer solstice in itself this is just where we are getting there and this um today's solar flare was just setting the stage but the 333 the number three is a number of completion and um this is where we're getting to the the set is complete now from here on it's really all falling in place magically it has already so but from here on forward it even will be more astounding more astonishing how everything is working together even all the so-called counter moves from the other source on this planet the artificial one who tries to push nature out and nature is who we are we are part of nature the sun is part of nature and it is also naturally the plant and the animal and the and the um elemental kingdoms which are rooting for us helping us it's all in all the whole nature's setting we are its voice and the sun is its amplifier so if we are coming together in synchronicity and in cohesion and coherent frequencies then the sun is producing these spectacular outbreaks and why am i so excited here this is what the astrological picture looks like for the moment when the flare peaked this is the heliocentric outlook first and 
you see here is earth and you could say, think um, the sun here at the center and that's what it really is here in this picture so the flare went off 73 degrees from the central meridian the earth facing meridian which means the uh, flares direction was here somewhere around 16 17 degrees libra and they say that it is mars and venus directed mars and venus will get the main bulk of the solar wind which has been most likely released and uh, usually there's a what's called a coronal mass ejection at the same time and the flare goes off it takes with it an enormous amount of solar plasma out into space and then throws that off at high speed up to several thousand kilometers per second traveling into space when it's going towards earth it's usually taking anywhere between 18 hours and three days and naturally the faster it comes the greater its impact is so an x flare usually creates really a fast solar wind going towards mars and venus being really um, subjected to the more physical impact of that solar flare. I mean the, the first one is the, the one which is the purely energetic one when the when we on earth are seeing it that's the moment of impact the eight minute delay um, how much it takes for the light to travel the distance from sun to earth however for protons which are the charged hydrogen atoms at the which the sun consists most of that solar plasma is is then interacting with earth and these are charged protons and they create then those beautiful powerful auras auroras northern lights and also can charge up even the ground to a degree that generators go up in flames whole electric grids are um, overloaded and short circuit and things like that and satellites can get impaired or even taken out uh, so it is many many powerful manifestations a big solar flare can have just if you're not yet um, informed about that just google the carrington flare the one from 1859 just at the start of our whole electronic and um, electric <laughs> age so to say and um, yes transformers were going up in flames and things like that if that would happen today i mentioned it several times this would leave a serious trail um, a serious um, impact on our present day society and communications and such anyway so this flare was mars and venus directed mars and venus the prime forces of biological manifestation again nature our neighbor planets the male and the female counterpart to bring the new creation the two planets of creativity in uh, in any of our charts if you have a strong venus mars connection then you are um, definitely having to do something with your creative powers in some way or other and they want to show themselves up so here you see this is the geo uh, heliocentric picture of mars and Pallas here in midheaven and venus rising so this in itself um this is this was a per powerful activation which happened now let me show you this that very same moment actually a minute and 32 seconds later is the exact timing there was the heliocentric earth aspolus opposition okay let's look at what that means here is earth 2907 and 2907 here is Aspolos. Aspolos is the 
Sherlock Holmes energy I mentioned many times. It's the interest in the mysterious, the dark, the unknown, um, getting to the bottom of a of a crime even of a definitely of a mystery of something which has some darkness to it so Aspolos definitely has that morbid side to it to that interest in the difficult and dark interesting that um, uh, very close by just hours earlier there was a Sun Juno conjunction and that is actually here that was the Sun Juno conjunction Juno the asteroid of teamwork group effort here close to the uh, oppos opposing the galactic center actually that was just a day earlier on the 18th there was the Sun's opposition to galactic center so these days these last few days already have been enormously important enormously powerful and you probably have felt it too I mean we are in that build up and I said it I guess in my last recording the stairways to heaven that's kind of how this month of June really feels as we are in the center column of the Mayan calendar for a few more days on the 22nd will be the last one of the 20 so this in itself is an interesting synchronicity and here when Sun and Juno had their conjunction when this teamwork energy was reinforced uh, re um, empowered for for the next 365 days or so Venus rising here in Greenwich and Aries at the 10th house cusp in Aries yes Venus alone I mean Venus is still the queen of the night right now as you know I mean every evening when you go out you will see Venus now in its brightest mode shining as evening star carrying that frequency of harmonizing the world in a very altruistic and wonderful way of feeling for others wanting everyone to be happy and so that is that basic energy Venus very shiny these days and also very realistic is this Venus naturally with the Capricorn what it is in anyway this is just the uh, surrounding we have here so let's look at a few more charts let's roll back the picture a little bit I'm gonna show you a little bit where we are coming from so let's go back to a um, new moon two days ago Twenty six forty three, the galactic center at twenty seven and ten. So Earth was almost perfectly conjunct the galactic center on that new moon two days ago. Whenever the galactic center comes in, this is a amplifying energy. We are charged up from pretty much the core of our universe. That's how you have to see the galactic center. That's where all the stars we see in our night sky are rotating around. Only if we, excuse me, excuse me only if we um, use a, a telescope, we can see farther into space, but by bare eyes, that's all you can see. So it is our experience that the galactic center is the center of our universe. So the galactic center playing a role here. 
makes these next four weeks super important, more important than average. So um, also the square to Neptune and to Ceres, hmm, very interesting here this opposition which we have been talking about. It's Ceres's nourishment on all levels again very much helping us to stay healthy, to stay grounded to say happy it is that care frequency which comes in in the last degree of Virgo as we will see this is a very important little player right now particularly if I shall come just jump back once more to this chart here the one from the solar flare you see I said the flares energy went about in that this direction so you see Venus Mars yes but Ceres most certainly also receives a fair bit of that frequency from the Sun in this particular flare and if we go and look at what this moment was heliocentric Earth Aspalus conjunction opposition for Washington and you see Ceres is right at the ascendant here in the last degree of um, Virgo, a very powerful degree of completion, of accomplishment, of understanding how to work this um, st structure to get from A to B, a very refined degree that that is. So it seems things are getting really really interesting we are coming into the final stages of the of that play which we were hoping well, had already reached its conclusions and its its resolution I should say um, two three years ago it was not yet time for that it's really a steady build up just a, a little detail here 2732 in Cancer where the moon is at that moment also when the flare went off you see it again that is just within a minute of the flare within a minute of this picture here which we looked at before this one you see right in the center of the of the target here we are looking sun conjunct not just Aspolis but also Juno very very close conjunction so this also brings depth and profound um, emotions into this um, teamwork situation and into understanding the mysterious and, and secretive levels of all of it. This is the perfect setup for a, for a dramatic ending, I would call it. You see those last degrees, they are anaretic or critical degrees. And we have a whole bunch of stuff in here foremost uh, for major suspension lines here in the last degrees of mutual signs mutual signs as such are about change so it is that last final um, kind of soaring into the sky before there comes a directional shift which is the summer solstice which I want to just give you this as a little preview because that's just tomorrow when the directional change will take place so this is up to that point that solstice point we are soaring high into the sky and then comes the decision point the change 
the redirection we are moving now again downwards we have reached the summit it's decision time hmm. that's what the word is then Rudyard gives the first 15 degrees of cancer decision and then consolidation so the sign cancer is regrouping everything bringing everything in a whole new perspective and yes what i wanted to say the moon here 27 32 that is the exact opposing point of the american independence declaration of 1776 pluto was here at 27 32 in um, capricorn so perfect opposition that means ch challenging these powers into a direct confrontation that's what the moon really is and the moon spe is, stands for the people hmm? that's what it's most um obvious manifestation is in a mundane chart yes the moon has so many levels of expression it's a symbol again the moon sp speaks for uh, stands for our personal emotions the changes of mood we're going through it is the connection with our animal nature if you want with our physiological nature it is the waters ebb and flow the momentarily changes which are always coming in and through the moon is the most um, kind of important for earth as it's the lens it's earth's satellite everything is kind of being measured against the moon the moon is the one in between you could say is the the mediator between all the other planets and us here on earth so yes this opposition of neptune and ceres which is definitely playing out over the next few months strongly it is a dissolution of all those support structures on one side everything has is going through a re a regrouping a regeneration and you could look at it also as a defragmentation something you probably are familiar with as we all have computers then on the hard drive things are pretty um t much turning into a puzzle a little piece of a phallus fa um, uh, saved here another in a totally different location the defragmentation what it does it unites what's belonging together creates a first of all takes everything out of its place and then regroups it in a way which makes more sense So let's go back here to the start here once more. New moon that was on the 18th and then Hygeia turned retrograde yesterday. Hygeia is about health, well-being and serendipity in a greater way of attracting what is good, what is nourishing what is healing helping i like this a lot here arocot pretty much exactly at the fourth house cusp arocot as you remember that is the ability to see the full picture the ability to integrate all the details which you're picking up and bringing them together and starting to see the three-dimensional structure of what's going on how things are interlinked and and overlapping and 
that you can't lo look at anything um, separate from the rest it's all coming together as one big picture as one big mosaic you could say so it is really that ability to stand a little away from the picture which is necessary if you're too close you only see the pixels beautiful also the part of fortune on the south node part of fortune is where things naturally gravitate towards in, in manifesting so that natural force of finding healing is focusing in on where we are coming from what is the reason things are the way they are and in Scorpio yes we are ready to go deep deep into the mystery and realize the profound implications this is after all hexagram 28 still the cutoff line will be two degrees for months on end the nodes have been here the south node in 28 28 is greatness in excess so everything comes at double load intensity force at us we are really in an acceleration channel you could call it that's why it is intense yet it's, it is demanding the moon here interesting again the re resonance with the independence chart at 1319 as the sun in that chart of July 4 1776 and then um, okay let's move on this is the heliocentric picture of that same moment I just wanted to show you this um, because let me go back to it what was the reason here well I guess first of all this is the degree um, where the <laughs> where the x-flare was heading towards so this in itself is interesting um, yes um, right this was the reason that's why I wanted to show you why I thought this was so important to see at that same moment when Hygieia turns direction as seen from earth there is this exact most exact within a minute or so heliocentric Jupiter Mercury conjunction hmm? Jupiter and Mercury hmm? expansive mind you can think of a very um, enthusiastic and and um, expansive way of mercurial energies in the last degrees of Aries Aries the sign where Mercury has exaltation where a new world is dreamt into to manifestation because everything I mean it's it makes total sense everything starts with an idea hmm? before anything can take form the idea has to be here the vision hmm? that is where Mercury and Jupiter bring in that vision so super important that was yesterday just short after the new moon as we saw and then yes then <laughs> this is kind of the the most important of them all you could say that is stupid and sad and having an exact sex style that is only happening every few years that Jupiter and Saturn have an exact multiple of 30 degrees 712 Saturn 712 Jupiter and you see this was just very short after Hygieia's change of direction and then again just a few hours later Sun and Juno has their conjunction all the while the moon is in Cancer the Sun still in the last degrees of Gemini 
beautiful combination by the way the Gemini Sun still holds that strive for more for greater for bigger for um, for more complex and multi dimensional reality that is that last degrees of Gemini certainly so and the moon in cancer going ahead uh, finding out as a scout what is next in that immersed in that emotional energy in its own sign of cancer of deeply feeling what is going on sensing it and immersing oneself even into kind of allowing to resonate with on a, on a very deep emotional level with, what, with what's going on around us and then yes here we have the sun's aspolos conjunction again 501 36 that was geocentrically and here you have uranus and yes mostly uranus here at the seventh house cusp again bringing that spice in of yes it's everything is rearranging changing and and also being very interesting and fascinating mesmerizing new unusual wild weird all of the above hmm? and um, orcus and theories orcus is about alchemy and transformation an energy similar to Pluto I see Orcus as the feminine for side of Pluto Pluto being way more um, way more dramatic in a way and manifesting itself in often in very harsh and impactful ways so is orcus much more subtle in generating a new way of seeing things hmm? and then theorize theorize the bears the mother bears protective instinct caring for what it deems important naturally its cups its offspring mm -hmm. caring for those who are weaker who cannot stand up for themselves that's the heroes. and again this is just um, minutes before that big solar flare you see here um, is that same moment heliocentrically once more Yeah, we looked at this one already. I guess I showed you pretty much all the charts here already now. Again, that is the chart for Washington America's capital. Will be super interesting what we can see developing in that country over the next couple months, I would say. Things are really one can even just observing it from far away and not really getting too much involved in it just skimming through the headlines kind of you can see yes things are building up it's um it will come to a to a to a climax there and to, to an apex there's no way of avoiding that anymore it's just a matter of when and it can be that this plays out still uh, quite 
in in baby steps you could say and building up continuously though and it could well take the whole rest of this year still to um to get to the bottom of the pile and i think patience is on our side as i pointed out also aw197 is over and again super important here in this opposition to sadden this whole year aw197 the art of war the ability to absorb any potentially harmful attempt turn the energies around and twist them in a way that it works in our favor in the favor of nature in the favor of liberation in the favor of freedom and so yes it's patience is uh, is the key it's 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 a wonderful wonderful virtue and we can cultivate it even more and feeling as we go we get stronger we get forged by nature presently yes um, the intensity level is uh, getting definitely more up there by the day particularly here with mars approaching the black moon will be I guess exact pretty soon just today hmm, tomorrow and then Venus pulling up Venus actually won't make it to catch up to Mars anymore because Venus is now slowing down in that sense it is from Earth's point of view let's go back to that for a sec here then you see what I mean from this is um, the heliocentric yes from earth's point of view here you see have earth and the sun you can think of here but i mean yes you have to look at it three-dimensionally so earth is more out here venus is inside uh, between sun and earth and is moving faster coming in between and in that sense coming into the bright light of the sun getting lost in its glare and then eventually being reborn on the other side as a morning star and this is also will be the face of venus retrogression i guess it's starting july the 23rd anyway venus is in her final glory now so you can think um, up to july 23rd we get to the conclusion to the pinnacle of the whole thing before venus then enters a whole new cycle so i said that many months ago in october 2022 20, when venus had its in uh, superior conjunction which means it was behind the sun from earth's point of view so that was when venus was up here in that way seen which really was the birth of that whole second half of its cycle anyway venus is here coming to a final culmination experience and yes moving slower and slower and mars pulling away again which is very unusual that mars is moving faster than venus but that's what it is right now and um i guess we have pretty much looked through all the charts just the last teaser here i thought i want to give you that's tomorrow's summer solstice cancer ingress the moment when the energy shifts when the sun is perfectly at the highest point over the northern hemisphere before starting slowly slowly to come down again the day is getting shorter approaching winter solstice then so this is the big turning point hmm? and i mean it's really easy you don't have to be a big astrologer to see the 
nature of this chart of this moment the venus and the moon the moon approaching venus this in itself very beautiful in leo shiny strong radiant powerful being who we are not afraid and um knowing that really by now we we it gets every day stronger the the knowing really that the forces out there these players are mere silhouettes they they are no more really holding power they might show pump up their chest and and and, and bang their chest and, and and try to impress us in any way but if you um just blow a little bit they fall over um everything is a pushover right now you just have to be in your power say no that is the one thing important these days get your civil courage charged up amplified it's the time this is our moment never the opportunity has been bigger that is really what is happening in the next few months really beautifully supported again by the sun the solar maximum that time when everything is in in a turmoil hmm, going through shifts and re re um rearranging itself re what's the word i'm looking for is um let me just give it to you just one sec reconstruction transfiguration that's the energies i'm talking about that is what's underway and naturally the first degree scorpio rising with homia and the south node here radamantus and elatus i mean they all play an important role these little planets elatus being the ability to improvise to take sudden turns and reorient re reorient itself homia the creation from fire from ground up building the foundation for that new land to rise and that new land is really pushing out of the ocean now in a allegorical way a whole new continent is rising in a sense with whole new possibilities again look at it more in an allegorical way i think that's really where all the earth changes which i'm i was pointing at mostly will happen they happen on the inner level which is extremely um auspicious hmm? the least destruction we are on the most optimal timeline i keep repeating that i've said that since months since years it is not so easily visible as long as we're in the middle of it but the more we get to see from a elevated point from distance we can see and figure it out yes it is everything is extremely charismatic and and auspicious serendipitous Yes, and I can't stop raving about just this Moon-Venus conjunction here up on top of the chart in Leo. Anyway, um, enough for that. I will make another recording starting with tomorrow's um, change of direction and then see what's happening in the next few days, which is again an amazing opening of that next scene which yeah it's um i can't stop uh, saying it it is an amazing time to be alive even though there are all the difficult and extremely challenging events and occurrences in each and everyone's life they will be different they are different 
it's according to our personal frequency what we pull into our field what our contribution is in the purification of the bigger picture here and look at it this way whatever is coming your way as a difficulty is really you purifying an aspect of reality by allowing it to come and meet and then come from your center from your heart from your totality and deal with the situation in a loving accepting patient way but very fierce a very strong very direct and connected with your inner spine with your inner guidelines with your inner principles if your inner plumb line of truth and integrity thank you for listening and um talk to you soon i love you all happy solstice celebrate yes celebration is the key